everyone and welcome back to another amazing two weeks of Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. I'm your host Clady and as I said I'm gonna be here with you until August 14th. I hope everyone is okay. I'm gonna have to say hello to everyone in the chat and I want to remind for those of you that are watching me from YouTube that the best way to follow along during the live is to tune in on behance.net slash live. If you tune in on Behance I'll be able to answer your questions live and of course say a lie to you, uh, hello to you and I can see so many familiar faces starting from Alberto what's up how's it going and Monica Keith Jay Nick Anthony Sherry Anna Brackett how are you nice to see you thank you so much for joining me here Jotirmia Anthony Jack Wade Wade thank you so much for joining Black Bessie Monica um, and Colby cities so many wonderful familiar faces but also some of you is new and for those of you who are just joining us today for the first time at the uh, illustrator daily creative challenge let me show you how you can join the challenge and take part during these two weeks so i'm going to jump straight into my laptop in order to show you how to join the challenge and um, go into our fantastic landing page let's do that fantastic so as i mentioned this is the landing page for the illustrator daily creative challenge and in order to get there all you have to do is to click on behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator the link above me there and all you have to do is to click on the bl big blue button here in the middle of the page where it says hi Claudie take the challenge of course for you will say your name and then you're gonna see that once you scroll down each day, we're gonna unveil each one of those cards that are with the that will give you more details regarding the topic of the each single challenge. Also, something that is important, and by the way, tune in because I want to give you a little sneaky preview of tomorrow design. Uh, but before we get there, let's work on our welcome stream. I usually um, create. A cover for those of you who are joining for the first time something that is fundamental to know when you join an illustrator daily creative challenge is our wonderful community chat and in fact i'm talking about discord to join discord if you have not done that before all you have to do is to click here where it says community chat and once you click there you're going to be transported into the fantastic world of discord there is also a link that I can share with you if uh, perhaps you find it more useful. Here it is, is bit.ly slash AI Discord. And once you're gonna be transport, transported into our fantastic Discord world, you're gonna see that that's the fantastic place where we review your work. In fact, there are many wonderful a moderator and we can see also mentors like Colby, Jack, Kathleen, um, Rocky, also the fantastic Adobe Live team is there and of course you guys, the wonderful community of the challenges and in fact here you can share your work using the challenge, challenge, channel, channel, challenge <laughs> is over here under feedback. I always get confused uh, but if you uh, click over here under challenge you'll be able to click on this little plus icon and then all you have to do is to select um, whatever image you want to share and click on open in order then to share it with the community your work will be reviewed live during the stream that are coming after us and i'm going to jump into the schedule because today is another fantastic busy day at adobe live but also you can give each other tips and uh, the wonderful mentor are going to be there and i'm going to be there to give you tips and techniques and maybe some adjustments, some inspiration, or just tell you that you've done a fantastic job. And as I say all the time here during um, Adobe Lives, this is a fantastic safe space for all of you to learn new tips and techniques in Illustrator, in this case, um, and experiment, create a portfolio piece that you never have the time to create, explore something that maybe is a little bit more far away from what you usually do or you've never done before, but well, this is the right time just to uh, get loose and start to learn these new techniques with us. And if for sometimes, for example, you don't know how to finish your work or you're not sure about your design, just share it anyway. The beauty of the community is that we have so many designer, professional, students, uh, marketer, so you can get an insight from each single fantastic person that is here on Discord. 
So let me jump into the schedule because as I said, the day is busy. And in fact, it started with Julia Masalska with Adobe Spark and then Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, which was your first photo, your first challenge of the day with the lovely Kathleen Martin, followed by the wonderful Sam Peterson in character design. Sam, I'm gonna have to go and check the stream because I would love to learn some character design myself. And now we're here with me, Claudia from Prim My Soul in the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge which will be followed by mobile app design with Ambert Rodriguez. And then the third challenge with, of the day with our Pinsky will be in XD. And at the end of the day, the lovely doodle therapy with Alice Lee and Hemi Wibowo. I hope that I pronounced everyone's name correctly. If you have hung out with me here before at Adobe Live, you know that I'm very, um, I'm very good and at, at, at inventing new words and saying name wrong. So I apologize in advance for that. <laughs> uh, but let's get started and open Illustrator. Before doing so, actually, I want to share um, a way to have more resources for today's stream because today is just a welcome stream. So I'm here to get question and actually I'm going to jump in the chat to see if there is any um, specific question that you guys may want to um, something that you might want to know. Paul says cloudy. <laughs> That's really funny, Kip. I never heard that. I'm going to have to go and check that out. Actually, my name is Claudia. I'm Italian. For those of you who don't know me, probably I should do a little bit better introduction. I'm an Italian designer based in Manchester, UK, where I run my design studio, um, Print My Soul, which is over here for those of you um, that want to have a look at my portfolio. But we're going to we're going to actually get some text for today work. And um, yes, so my name is Claudia, but I go by Claudia because in here in the UK, everyone says Claudia. And like Claudia in Italian, it brings a smile. When you say Claudia, it's just like a frown. So Claudia is the way my mom calls me and also keeps the retains the smile. So that's why it's Claudia. <laughs> but Keith, that was very funny. Cornell, nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. Carol Pearl, nice to see you here. Um, Anna, I finally will be able to get uh, to be able to do an illustrator challenge. Yes, in fact, let, let's get started. I'm just gonna scroll real quick. Um, and Sherry still puzzle why August 3rd doesn't appear on this page. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it looks like there is no, um, the, oh yes, correct. So thank you so much, Laurie. So that if she was probably talking about the mainly, uh, the main page, in fact, in order to join for today, today's an introductory stream, so we don't have it here on the cards, uh, but in order to join, I've prepared some juicy a file that you can actually download and follow along while we create our folder and I really should get going because as usual as you guys probably know I always rush towards the end with the design so why don't we get started and uh, in order to download the file all you have to do is to head to my personal um, mentor website which is different from my studio and is iamclady.com and if you click here on resources you'll be able to uh, download the starter file and as you can see it says adobe illustrator dcc adobe actually said it in in spanish <laughs> but adobe illustrator dcc and if you click on the starter file you should be able to um, see the file that i prepared for you which is a font two color two color palettes and so there are a s e file we're just gonna see that in a second and also a photo that you can find from from my website and then we're gonna get some text over from my website as well but that's most important if you want to um, join the design and follow along with my designs with my color that's the perfect way to start so remember i am claudia.com slash resources and click on the starter file and i'm going to jump now into illustrator so let's get started Hi, Christian. Hi, Andreas. Hi, Dorina. Uh, there is a theme for the coming challenges. So, Dorina, I know that the other uh, streamer like to keep a particular theme. I like to explore the real potentials of Illustrator. So we're going to be talking graphic design, typography and illustration. And I'm going to really uh, try to show you my tips and techniques to uh, take the most out of um, Illustrator. So uh, the, as usual, my theme is really to focus on the techniques and to try to explore as many topics as possible. Tomorrow, we're actually going to start with illustration and then we're going to be followed by graphic design. But I'm going to tell you a little bit more about 
tomorrow um, work in a second. So here is a sneaky preview of what I'm going to be creating today. So today we're going to create a cover, which is actually a UX. And I know that many of you ask me question about how to get started in, in the business and how to get hired. So I thought to show you how to create a little page, which you can also use maybe as a Facebook ad advert, if you get rid here of, of the title in order to promote yourself. And then we can turn it into a Behance cover. In order to get started, let's uh, go to the home page. So that's the, the page that you'll see when you open Illustrator and then click on Command N to open the new document folder, set the intent to web and click on web large. Now web large is 1920 pixel by 1080, which is the standard 16 uh, by nine uh, ratio for video. I'm going to name it DCC cover and click on create in order to get started. Then I'm going to go ahead under window and select my swatches library. And then I'm going to click on this little icon over here in order to bring in those watches that I've created for you. So to find them, just click on other library, navigate it to navigate to your destination folder. I have just placed it on my desktop and then click on number one and number two. I'm going to use number one, but you have the option of using the other one. And once you click on open, as you can see, I have actually two of them. As you can see, we have our uh, color palette ready to go. I'm going to then click here on the rectangle tool from our toolbar and click once where it says here intersect. So um, the smart guides, which I'm going to show you how to activate in a second, indicate you that that's the corner where you can intersect your shapes to the very top of your artboard. All you have to do is to click once and you'll be able to set the size of your rectangle. So in this case, I'm going to set it to the same size of the arbor. So 1910, 1920 by 1080 pixel and click on OK. Then I'm going to click on the gradient tool here in my toolbar on the left and head to my properties panel. Remember each single panel that I'm mentioning and for whatever reason you cannot find it. All you have to do is to go under window and you'll find all those lovely panels here under the window menu. So in this case, with my rectangle selected, all we did is click on that gradient tool. And then we're going to click on this third little icon here, which is the free from gradient, just like so. And as you can see, we have this lovely shape with a lot of dots. Those are dots are um, the colors that we can use. And in order to change color, all you have to do is to double click. And then because we already have our um, wonderful new palette, all we have to do is to bring it into our swatches. So I'm going to go under window, make sure the swatches is there and you can simply click into the new um, into the new swatches that I've imported. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. So click on the little folder and then drag it into your main swatches. And here they are. By doing so, you're going to be able to oops, click on your little point on um, the gradient. And as you can see, it opens another little swatches panel. So then you can go ahead and select one of the color. And I'm going to close all this window because it's getting a little messy here. We already imported the color into the swatches panel. So that's all um, ready to go. Then let's select this other one. And I'm going to perhaps maybe use the yellow. And then I'm going to double click on this other one and then click on the magenta. And here it is. This is our started uh, point, which is the background gradient. Also, um, once we um, click here with the selection tool, we can select the shape. So basically we exit uh, the gradient tool. We can see that there is a little stroke here, which is black. All you have to do is to click on the stroke and then uh, select none. None is this little square with the red bar, which basically is saying we don't want any stroke. So it leaves it transparent. Um, so let's actually do that. Fantastic. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead into my layers and name this layer background. In order to name it, all I've done is simply double click on the side of the layer. Hi, Marta. Hi, Lena. Uh, nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. Sorry if I'm going to go a little fast, but I want to show you as much as possible. Now that we created the background, I'm going to click next to the little eye to toggle the lock and we're going to be able to do um, um, more actions on top of the rectangle without losing uh, the position of the rectangle. I'm going to click here on this little icon at the bottom of the layer panels and that will allow us to create a new layer, which I'm going to call image. Then using the shortcut shift command P, I'm going to open a new, um, I'm going to browse my folder in order to place a new file. The file that I'm going to use is the image that I provided for you is um, an image from an event that I was in, I think in Guadalajara, yeah, for Talentland with Adobe Latin America. And I'm going to click once in order to place the image. 
and here it is and you can feel free to use this image but of course i would love for you to use your own maybe your viewer work maybe just your portrait whatever you prefer now i don't know if these people really want to be featured into my cover page so in order to mask them out i'm going to jump into my pencil tool by clicking on pressing n on your uh, keyboard or all you have to do is to go here under the pencil tool on the toolbar and what i'm going to do is to click and drag and bear in mind i'm using a mouse so this is not going to be the most fantastic drawing that i've ever done but basically what i've done here and i'm going to zoom in so you can see is creating a shape that goes over pretty much me and takes away all the rest and also i want to remind you to double click on the pencil tool in order to bring in the option and set the options and set the fiddle to smooth that would allow your stroke to be nice and curvy so you don't have all those sharpie uh, corner and illustrator would just help you with that now select um, the v which is the selection tool the black arrow and hold shift in order to select both our little shape and our image now actually before doing so i'm going to create a copy of the image because i'm going to use it in a second so all i have to do is to select an image hold on option on mac that's alt on windows and click and drag in order to create a copy here it is then um, it actually looks like from here that i'm not done a great job at all with the shape let's see uh, it looks like there is a little um, corner so it wasn't closed what we can do is perhaps select p which is our pen tool and then select on the first anchor point and then click under the under you find this little circle which will allow you to close the shape so simply what happened is that i didn't finish the shape where i started but you can always fix it as you can see click once and then click on the other you can also select both point and use the shortcut command j uh, that's control j on windows in order to join the two anchor points and then by hovering on this little point as you can see our pen tool shows a little minus click once and um, that deletes the point that we don't want fantastic so it looks like this is way a better shape um, i'm going to uh, delete this one that it was here because that was the one um, that it wasn't closed and then i can see some russian in the chat art blog if you write in english i'll be able to um hopefully reply to your question or say at least hi to you and i'm gonna click on option and drag in order to create a copy of the shape which is not the right one paloma says hello you all so happy to be here yes i'm super happy to um cornell have you tried to recreate a jpeg photo in illustrator pixel by pixel that would take a lot of time but i actually created a vector Im image illustration um and i'll share the link in, in in discord after after the stream so now i'm gonna select both images by clicking on each one of them while i hold the shift key and then i'm gonna use command 7 to create a clipping mask and here it is fantastic then i'm gonna create another copy here of this image by clicking option and use the shortcut command shift right curly bracket to bring it on top then select both images go under the properties panel and align them in order to make sure that you know which one you align them to all you have to do is to click one so for example as you can see now the outline is on the photo if you click on the shape we're going to align it respectively to the shape in this case i want to align it to the photo so i'm going to align it both vertically and horizontally just like so then i'm going to click out and just select the shape press E to trigger the eyedropper tool and click once in order to uh, find our gradient. Now, I think that perhaps I have to unlock my layers in order to be able to uh, pick our lovely layers here in order to get the gradient. Oops, it looked like it was working. Otherwise, all we have to do is simply go back into our gradients and then we can, here it is, select the gradient here. And as you can see, we have two different points and nice and easy let's go and select it back from our swatches i'm gonna click to add another point and in this case i'm gonna select the yellow then with uh, uh, this gradient on top of my image in order to reveal the image all i have to do is to click on the properties go under opacity and um, oops make sure that we click on v in order to use the selection tool and so we're not editing the gradient and then go back into the opacity and the blending mode that we're going to set is soft light as you can see just give us the uh, opportunity to uh, give a little bit of a color matching to our photo so as you can see i went back and locked my background layer click and drag to select both the gradient and my photo hold shift and drag one of the corner box to um 
scale the image proportionally. Then another thing that I've done in that folder, besides the image and mm, the color palette, you can find some text. All you have to do is to click on the type tool and click once. And in this case, I'm just going to write Illustrator. The font that you're going to find in the folder is um, a free font that is called uh, Integral. And um, I was using it for uh, my design usually, so I, I thought to uh, share that with you. Let me see if we can find it over here in my fonts. No, it looks like, oh, here it is. So I had all my classifications selected because I was actually playing uh, with Adobe font. I think I got like three minutes to go. I can't believe it. So integral is the one that I uh, choose to share with you. And I'm just gonna make the font a little bit bigger. Here it is. And then I'm gonna use uh, the font here by holding option to uh, generate the what you would usually find on um, the navigation of the website. So perhaps home and then work and then info, those could be uh, the three main link. And of course, for this link, I'm gonna make it much, much smaller, just like so, and put it on the right side. And then I'm gonna uh, go ahead and copy a paragraph that I have already styled that for you because otherwise that we are completely running out of time and this is just a paragraph that i took for my website just like so now uh, in order to create a button i'm gonna go super super fast i literally have one minute click on the rectangle tool and click and drag in order to create a rectangle then press on a to bring up the direct selection tool and you'll see these lovely lots dots all you have to do is to click and drag them in in order to create a shape. And again, here, I'm gonna simply use this font, uh, make it smaller by holding uh, shift and then press command, shift right curly bracket, and I'm gonna double click to change the text into hire me. Fantastic, and that's pretty much it. So those are the main components in terms of um, the UX that I wanted to share with you. So we got the navigation, we got a title, you got a photo, you got a paragraph, and you got a button. One more thing, probably I got one minute to spare. In order to create a much cooler button, what I usually do is to create a sort of like fake drop shadow. So Command C to copy, Command B to paste on the back and use the arrow keys to move it a little bit to the right and a little bit to the bottom. And then let's go into our swatches and give it like a darker color, just like so. And make them, I'll give that a purple. Fantastic. Now, if you want, you can also outline the text by pressing Shift Command O when the text is selected and change the fill. Fantastic. I hope you're going to spend more time on this cover. As you can see, I can already share with you um, the final design. I used a little bit more of time and distribute um, the uh, object in a different way. I'm going to share this design in Discord and I'm actually going to uh, do so uh, right away so you can actually see how to um, down how to share your work in discord so click on the feedback challenge um, and then go and find the actual cover that you need here it is select the design the finished design click on open and click on upload and he's ready to go. As you can see, my final design is already there. Unfortunately, it's pretty much time to say goodbye. And before I'm gonna do so, I want to also remind you to share your work on Behance. Um, tomorrow during the first challenge, once we finalize the first challenge, I'm gonna show you better how to create a new uh, Behance project because there is also the fantastic opportunity to be featured into the galleries. You can browse the galleries and get inspired by going on Behance.net slash galleries slash challenges slash illustrator in this case if you want to check the illustrator one otherwise if you just go um, into galleries and challenges you'll be able uh, to see all the different categories like xd photoshop and illustrator galleries now monica cornell everyone is said already bye you know that it's time to say goodbye so i'm gonna see you tomorrow with challenge number one which is gonna be a kaleidoscopic illustration so i look forward to see you there tomorrow but thank you so much for joining me today thank you everyone bye